Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about diuretics and the mechanism of action in hypertension. To know more about hypertension, watch my video I made earlier on it. I'm leaving the link for it in the description down below. So, diuretics. These are commonly known as water pills. They help our body get rid of unneeded water and salt through the urine. Getting rid of excess salt and water occurs at kidney level. This excess salt and water is taken out from our body, therefore the blood becomes thin. In other words, the volume of the blood decreases, which causes lowering in blood pressure, which is very much necessary in hypertension. We are going to discuss mainly about four class of drugs. First, the thiazides. Second, the loops or high ceiling diuretics. Third, potassium sparing diuretics. Fourth, aldosterone antagonist. To better understand the mechanism of actions, let us just quickly take a look into salt and water flow across the nephron. Here is a basic diagram of the nephron. As you know, a nephron is a structural and functional unit of the kidney. The first part is called the glomerulus. The glomerulus is a sac-like structure which is lodged inside a cup called Bowman's cup. The glomerulus drains excess fluid and salt from the capillaries into the Bowman's cup. The Bowman's cup produces into proximal convoluted tubule, which again bends into loop of Henle and continues as distal convoluted tubule. The distal convoluted tubule joins the collecting duct. The nephron is lined by a network of capillaries. The exchange of salt and fluid occurs between these capillaries and nephrons. If we take a close look near the proximal convoluted tubule, the ions sodium, potassium, chloride and water are reabsorbed into the capillaries and the ions hydrogen and ammonium are absorbed into the proximal convoluted tubule. In the descending loop of Henle, Water is reabsorbed into the capillaries and in the ascending loop of Henry, sodium and fluoride ions are absorbed into the blood. In the distal convoluted tubules, sodium, bicarbonate and water are reabsorbed into the blood. Whereas, potassium and hydrogen ions are absorbed into the distal convoluted tubule. In collecting duct, urea and water are again reabsorbed into the blood. Now that we know the salt and water flow across the nephrons, let us go take a look into the drugs. First, the thiazides. The thiazides have their action on the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron. They promote the flow of sodium, chloride and water from the capillaries into the distal convoluted tubule. From there, the ions and water are drained into the urine. As the ions and water are absorbed from the blood, the blood becomes thin and its volume decreases, thereby the blood pressure decreases. It may decrease extracellular fluid volume, plasma volume and cardiac output, which helps reduction in blood pressure. It may also reduce blood pressure by direct arterial dilation. Next comes the loops. These are the inhibitors of sodium potassium chloride co-transporter. As you know, at the loop of Henle of the nephrons, sodium, chloride and water are reabsorbed into the blood capillaries. This reabsorption is facilitated by sodium, potassium and chloride co-transporter. These loop diuretics, they inhibit these co-transporters and prevent the reabsorption of sodium and water. So, the blood remains thin, its volume does not increase and the blood pressure decreases. As the body plasma volume decreases, aldosterone production increases which causes sodium reabsorption and potassium and hydrogen loss. Furosemide increases excretion of calcium, magnesium, bicarbonates, ammonia, and phosphates. Furosemide also reduces extracellular and intracellular fluid, which causes reduction in blood pressure and also cardiac output. Now, the potassium sparing diuretics. They inhibit sodium reabsorption in the distal convoluted tubule by binding to sodium channels. As you know, in the distal convoluted tubule part, sodium is reabsorbed into the capillaries. These potassium sparing diuretics, they block the potassium channels and inhibit the flow of sodium and as usual, the blood remains thin and the blood pressure does not increase. Thereby, 
they increase the loss of sodium through urine without depleting potassium. Allosterone antagonist. Generally, allosterone attaches to its receptor on the walls of the distal convoluted tubule cells and it mediates sodium and water reabsorption into the blood. The aldosterone antagonist drugs compete with aldosterone for the receptors. They prevent the reabsorption of sodium and water into the blood capillaries. Therefore, the volume of the blood does not increase and the blood pressure decreases. This completes our video. We will learn about more antihypertensive agents in the upcoming videos. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to Medboy.